Chapter 11, Lesson 2. In this lesson, we'll take a look at uh, how intermolecular forces affect physical properties. Remember, in the first lesson, we took a look at uh, what intermolecular forces are and how uh, they affect uh, the strength of the attraction between particles. Uh, so in general, we'll say that the strength of the attraction between these particles will uh, greatly affect the properties of substances or solutions. Uh, and remember, these are physical um, uh, properties, so we're talking about physical effects or physical bonds. You can say it in, in, in uh, quotations. These are physical bonds that we're taking a look at. <clears throat> the first one we'll take a look at is something called viscosity, and we'll define each one of these and then talk about um, how it is affected. So viscosity is uh, the resistance of a liquid to flow. So something that is a viscous uh, flows very slowly. Uh, and it is related uh, essentially with how easily molecules can move past one another. So we should expect then if the molecules have strong bonds between them, for a molecule with strong bonds uh, it should have a high viscosity. And viscosity does increase with stronger intermolecular forces. And it also decreases with temperature. So if you get, for example, honey is a good uh, example of this. If you take honey and heat it up, it starts pouring faster and faster and faster. And same thing with oil. In fact, motor oil has to be um, specifically uh, made so that uh, as the engine heats up, the oil can still do its job, even though it thins out. Um, so what you have in this case, you have uh, a, a lower viscosity, and that's why this one flows faster. This should be, you have a higher viscosity here. If you take a look, we can actually um, we can compare the viscosities, say, of uh, five different compounds. And the, the thing here is the bigger the molecule gets, these are actually just carbon and hydrogen, these are hydrocarbons. And the bigger the molecule gets, uh, the higher the viscosity. You'll see that this number, for example, is quite a big, bigger, this is 10 to the negative third, uh, you know, versus anything above it. So we'll see that with increasing molecular mass, uh, increasing length of the molecule, viscosity increases. And the next, uh, whoops, or the next property is something called surface tension. Now, every liquid um, exhibits a surface tension. It is especially uh, prominent with water, and this is why there are uh, animals that can actually, called water striders, that can move along the water, because the surface of any liquid has a strong uh, force uh, on it a, between the molecules or, or a, a, a strength the strength of the bonds between the molecules cause the surface of a liquid uh, to th seem like there's a film on it and this is uh, because the and technically because the interior molecules um, have to uh, bond with many more partners than surface molecules that since surface molecules don't have to bond with as many partners, they can actually form stronger bonds between themselves. Uh, you think of it uh, this way: if uh, you were, if you had a uh, seven hands, which you know you probably uh, not have as many friends, uh, but you could actually uh, hold on uh, to more friends uh, with those seven hands. Uh, is if you had to, you know, hold on to say seven friends, then you'd hold on to seven friends with your seven hands. If you only had to hold on to three friends with those seven hands, you can grab onto those friends much, much more strongly and keep them from leaving you. Uh, so that, you know, a similar idea here with, uh, with molecules at the surface. And uh, well, we should say a few things about um, uh, water has uh, a very strong surface tension. Other substances also have high surface tensions, but water uh, has a very high surface tension because water has hydrogen bonding in it. And this again applies, surface tension applies to liquids. You can say, you know, here we talk about liquids with surface tension. Um, we're going to take a quick look at phase changes. Uh, now these should be familiar to you, uh, but uh, we should know about the changes such as vaporization, sublimation, you should know about these vocab terms. If not, take a uh, pause it and take a look at uh, this phase change diagram. We're going to take a look at the details between these phase changes because these phase changes can tell us uh, about the strength of the forces between the molecules. So this is kind of a review. Um, so here it says um, a melting or fusion, sometimes 
another fancy word for melting is the word fusion. Uh, you can think of it, the molecules are fusing together. It may be slightly misleading, the term. But, um, and then uh, deposition may be uh, unfamiliar to you or less familiar than the other ones. You can think of gas depositing uh, as a solid. This happens in the wintertime. In fact, if you uh, come out uh, to your uh, parents' car or to your own car on a, after a very cold night, what you'll see is you'll see... Uh, frozen snowflake style crystals on the windshield. Now those did not go from the liquid to the solid. They didn't go from the gas to the liquid to the solid uh, because otherwise you get essentially frozen water droplets. So the fact that you have these snowflakes uh, means that the uh, water went directly from a gas to a solid. This is a deposition. And we can say some more about this. Uh, a famous uh, one that's, uh, or a less famous one, is something called liquefaction. And this happens um, as a gas uh, is uh, compressed to become a liquid. This is at room temperature. This is uh, done via compression. Technically, there's two ways to make a liquid into, or a gas into a liquid. Uh, you can cool the gas and the molecules uh, start colliding together, or you can compress the gas. Uh, you can force the molecules to come together, and this is done through liquefaction. Essentially, every gas, say nitrogen gas, oxygen gas, is liquefied in this manner. The energy changes uh, associated uh, with the phase changes are important to talk about, and we have seen this before, hopefully. Uh, anytime you go from a, a lower to a higher phase, uh, in the case of sublimation, as you go from a solid to a gas, in the case of vaporization, from a liquid to a gas, in the case of melting from a solid to a liquid, all of these are endothermic. Uh, the delta H is greater than zero, which means delta H, uh, recall, is positive. Uh, heat must be put into the system. This makes sense because molecules have to uh, increase in energy, so heat has to be placed into the molecular bonds in order to separate them. If you go the other way, in terms of uh, deposition, so, uh, gas to solid, condensation, a a gas to liquid, and freezing, liquid to solid, you get the reverse. You get an exothermic process. Energy is released, and this makes sense. Uh, anytime uh, a substance freezes, the molecules slow down, and so energy must be released. Energy of motion must be released. And these are the intermolecular bonds, the energy between the bonds that's released, you could say. Uh, let's take a look at something called heat of fusion and heat of vaporization. Now we can study in detail uh, how much heat it takes, say, for water to go from a liquid to a gas. If we have an amount of water and we uh, want to say, well, we want to boil this water and make it into a, technically a uh, the gaseous vapor form, we can ask how much energy must be placed into a certain amount, say a gram or a mole of water. And this is what heat of vaporization is. It's the uh, energy required to change a liquid uh, at its boiling point and into a gas. At its boiling point, uh, otherwise you're just heating up the molecules. We want to essentially measure how strong the molecular bonds are. Now, if you take a look, now we graph here uh, the heats of uh, fusion and vaporization for four different substances. Now, first of all, you'll see that the heat of vaporization is much higher than the heat of fusion. These blue portions of the bars uh, are heat of vaporization. So this means that, it, and this is always, always the case, in the case of water, definitely in the case of even mercury, a liquid metal, because in order to make a liquid into a gas, you have to completely separate the molecules. So your liquid to gas phase change, you're completely separating the molecules. Complete uh, separation. Whereas as you go from a, a solid to liquid, you get essentially, you can say the molecules are loosened. So this is definitely the case. Now furthermore, if you take a look at the water, it has a higher heat of vaporization than does something something like diethyl ether. Um, now diethyl ether is actually slightly polar. Uh, in fact, if you were to draw the molecule, you'd see that the molecule kind of looks like this. Um, <clears throat> there is polarity about the oxygen, much like there is above uh, about the uh, water oxygen, and you have two groups out here. Uh, but there is no hydrogen bonding. So because of H bonding, uh, water has a higher heat of vaporization. Butane, which is nonpolar, has a lower heat of vaporization. So this is nonpolar, uh, this one's polar, and this one has hydrogen bonding. And that's um, why 
this trend. Now, mercury has even a higher heat of vaporization, and the bonding between mercury atoms is different uh, than any of these. Uh, mercury is a metal, and metallic bonding is actually can't really be compared fairly to uh, it's technically not a molecule. Uh, you have a different type of bonding in metals, which we'll talk about at the end. Um, and this essentially wraps up. We'll talk about the heating curve in the next lesson. This should wrap up for us lesson two of chapter 11.